Hey there everybody, uh, Wrenching with Bob, doing the Rabiconda tire change. I've done this video before and uh, I think I did it not so well before. I'm going to try and make a couple of improvements to my technique and see how that goes. So, I'll give it a try. So I think one of the things I learned before is you want to break this, break this bead all the way around on this side and all the way around on the other side. That way the tire is sitting in the divot in the middle, um, which makes getting the whole thing up and over uh, the, the rim a lot easier. I think that's one of the things I really struggled with before. So we'll see how that goes. Alright, so here it started. Now I'll work my way around. Be careful with that valve stem because there's that whole knuckle there that uh, has the tire pressure tire pressure sensor uh, mechanism right there. All right, cool. Let's flip it over. I gotta say that went quicker than the last time trying to get levers in there underneath and all that. All right. Now let's break the bead off this side. That certainly went better so far. All right, so everything's off the bead. Now I can use some tire irons to uh, start pulling it off one side. For those of you keeping score at home, uh, while the camera was off, I actually flipped the tire back over. Um, and so, of course, this bead is not quite as off. Uh, as the other side was. I'm just going to give this a little shove. Uh, the reason I did this is that I want to be able to, once I get once I get one of these guys down, uh, flipped over, I want to be able to tuck it, tuck it up underneath the uh, underneath the rotor. Well, that is certainly going way, way better than it did last time. Just turn it over and shove it off with the Rapconda. Again, pressure systems over here. So I'll start this over here. Careful with the disc, the rotor. Make sure you don't bang it up. And you go get your other tire. So the next step before actually mounting the tire is to use something like this, uh, some kind of a lubricant paste. Some people use Windex. Um, some people even use WD-40. And uh, this stuff is really made for the job. And I used it last time, and it certainly helped out quite a bit. So sort of liberally apply to the bead. Do pay close attention to the direction of travel. Um, right now I have this, I have the rim mounted such that the brakes are down, which would be the right side of the motorcycle. So the travel would be this way. And so the Rear tire has a marking that says rear and an arrow that goes this way, so this is the way that we want to mount this. I forget if I worked 
flipped it over with the Anaconda or what? Let's see, I did. Alright, so I'm kind of at my maximum gain there before we gotta work it with the spoons. I think I'm missing this guy being down in the divot. I think that's what's hurting me. Yep, sure enough. So you want to keep this side down on the divot because it gives a little bit more room on the other side for you work with. So you're not fighting yourself like I was. Okay. So despite the huff and puff, that still went a lot better than it did the last time. Tire's on. And now it's time to seat the bead. All right, so I put the strap around the tire. This actually helps it to sort of pooch out against the bead to hopefully make it so there's no large gaps of air. So when I slam it with, uh, you know, 100, 150 PSI, that as soon as it starts to really fill with air, that it actually seats against the bead and then pops it. So let's see if I can make that happen. So I got it to partially seat it. It's at least holding air. Got a big gap over here and some big gaps underneath. And I think I'm going to release here and see what I can do to finish it. See if the release actually lets it do what the tire's supposed to do. There goes one, there goes two. Alright, I was willing to give it more pressure than what is its normal pressure because sometimes you got to do that just to seat the bead. Now you want to check that line, there's a line that the manufacturer makes that's around there to, uh, to show you that it's actually seated, that the bead's actually seated in there. So there's, a, there's this line that's about four or five millimeters off of the rim if it's actually seated and it should be relatively even. If it's not, and it's warbled in in one section, then you haven't, you haven't really seated it well. So let's take a good look at the other side. This side looks good too. We have success. The bead is seated on both sides. I can take off my weights. And go balance it, and uh, and then remount it. So there you go. Hope that was helpful, and uh, that certainly went better than the last time did. Um, yeah, definitely better than the last time did. It was a lot shorter, and uh, well, the video will be shorter too. Thanks a lot. Like and subscribe.